because I don't think we ask engineers to be lawyers. And lawyers go to law school for a reason, and engineers go to engineering school for a reason. Um, but I do think it's ideal for engineers to understand how to work with lawyers and other professionals. And uh, that's true for, for many reasons. One reason that I think it's important for lawyer for engineers to know how to work with lawyers and to be to have a develop a legal intuition is so that they can help to avoid risk. And I talk about this in class with the students at, at Pratt, um, but it's it's a true for all professionals such as engineers. Um, the primary areas of risk are governed by the law in some way. And you don't avoid risk just to avoid trouble with the law, but you avoid risk so that you don't hurt people and damage property and all those kinds of things. And having a basic understanding of the law that governs these areas of risk can be very important, can help. It's hard for me to imagine a career path where there is more risk to the public than what is presented by a bad engineer, right? Uh, so an engineer who understands how to work with professionals who are there to help them mitigate risk is ideal. Um, that's true for um, a, a reason in contract. When you're dealing with contracts as an engineer, with all the outside um, folks that you deal with, it's really important to speak the language of the law because by speaking that language, you can get greater clarity around the understanding that you have with the other parties. Lawyers are professionals. Uh, accountants are professionals. And engineers will find themselves working with all sorts of professionals. And so um, the more that you can enter into that community of professionals and learn how to work with one another, the more you will build clientele, the more you will um, um, succeed in creating um, productive collaborations uh, and working with lawyers. Part of it is that I would tell any student who's graduating from the MEM program that they should be willing to get their, I use this expression a lot, get your hands dirty in the law. Uh, and that does not mean, again, to become a lawyer, but it does mean that I encourage you to invest time in reading contracts, invest time in reading closely, pay attention to the language because it does make a difference. Uh, I encourage you to think about risk and, and ways to mitigate it and to contribute to the conversation. You are in the best position to know how to avoid somebody or somebody's property from getting hurt. Uh, for, uh, the best position to create good relationships that add um, to uh, productive alliances moving forward. So I really encourage you to, to get involved in a certain ethic. Um, I mean, if you were to ask people on the street the most respected careers, at least in the United States, I can say, the most respected careers, uh, I think engineers would be very near the top of those most respected careers. And that doesn't happen by accident. It's not just because they're smart. It's not just because they, for instance, can do math, right? It's because for many decades they have maintained a certain ethic, a certain ethos um, of trust. And we uh, go through our daily lives trusting in engineers. Sure. And so, so Duke and the Triangle more broadly is an extremely entrepreneurial and innovative community. And, but I'll focus in on Duke. Um, coming out of the engineering school with the Dewhatch and biomedical innovation programs, um, that's an example of the kind of programs that are at uh, institutions all around this campus. And we at the Startup Ventures Clinic try to serve entrepreneurs who are at an early stage. Um, specifically, we try to serve those who couldn't otherwise afford legal services. So they tend to be very early stage pre-funding companies. And so what do we do to help them? Well, some of what we do is provide educational resources. We um, give presentations and education sessions so that uh, entrepreneurs can know how to move forward. Um, that's really important and I, I think we should do even more of that because a lot of times entrepreneurs um, move forward by making mistakes and then fixing them, making mistakes and then fixing them and moving forward. And we'd like to help entrepreneurs to avoid some of those early mistakes and education can go a long way toward that. Uh, legal assistant made a significant impact. I'll give one that happened just within the last couple of weeks. There are a few examples, but we had a client organization that's actually not from Duke, but um, was an engineering a group of engineers who have a very significant um, innovation that is going to, I think, really um, has potential to help people tremendously. Um, well, as all early stage entrepreneurs want to do, they want to share their really great idea, right? It's the natural impulse and it's something you should do. But theirs was a potentially patentable, um, it is a patentable um, uh, idea, and they were ready to disclose or share that in ways that would have undermined their ability to get that protection. So we intervened quickly, we helped form them as an entity, we help them start the provisional patent application. 
That was one way we helped them. Another way was just through familiarity with the process. It's a very young group, but familiarity with the process going forward, we knew a significant item on their business plan that needed to be added. It was a significant cost yeah. due to, for law school, so that's what first brought me here. But before that, I had worked for an international business consulting firm. I had gone to graduate school for literature. I had taught in a high school and at a um, regional university. Um, and then I came to law school mostly because I was interested in knowing more about what was on the front page of the newspaper. But I have to say, I really didn't know what lawyers did. <laughs> um, when I got here, I found myself really interested in transactional law. I like to help people come to agreements and build things and move forward. I think I have the engineer spirit in that way. I like to create and construct and move things forward and improve them. Um, and so I think that's what a lot of transactional lawyers do. But I also got really involved in what we would call community economic development. Community economic development is uh, using the tools of transactional lawyers and business development, etc., market tools, to help communities that are low-income communities to build a better life. Um, and I got involved with that. That helped me to see the role that entrepreneurship plays in creating jobs and, uh, and offering an uh, opportunity to people. And I just naturally kind of got into it. And I did practice in Chicago for a time um, with a large international law firm there, um, but couldn't stay away from Duke. When I came here as a student, uh, I and my family, we really just loved it. So um, we found our way back.